In this lesson, I'll continue discussing recursion through another numeric algorithm, the calculation of Fibonacci numbers. In the second part of the lesson, it'll be time for you to get to work and design your own recursive function, one that identifies symmetric strings, also known as palindromes. Let's get started. The calculation of a Fibonacci number is another example in the domain of mathematics that can benefit from the use of recursion. The Fibonacci numbers form a sequence starting with 0 and 1, where each following number is equal to the sum of the previous two. In other words, the first Fibonacci number in the sequence, called f0, is set to a fixed value of 0. The next Fibonacci number, called f1, is set to a fixed value of 1. After that, we calculate each Fibonacci number as the sum of the previous two. So f2 is equal to f0 plus f1, which is 1. f3 is equal to f1 plus f2, which is 2. f4 is f2 plus f3, which is 3. f5 is f3 plus f4, which is 5. And you see how this goes. The next values in this series would be 8, 13, 21, and so on. We can use the same mathematical notation I showed you for the factorial problem in order to define the nth Fibonacci number as follows. Fn is equal to n itself when n is less or equal to 1. Notice that this covers the cases for f0 being 0 and f1 being 1. And fn is equal to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 if n is greater than 1. This covers all subsequent numbers in the sequence. As you can see, this definition qualifies as recursive, because the operation being defined, the calculation of the Fibonacci number for a given index n, appears in the body of the definition itself. Now our goal as Python programmers can be defined as follows. Can we write a Python function called Fibonacci that takes a number n as an input and returns the nth number in the sequence? The answer is, of course, yes, and this is what our code looks like. We start with the header of a function called Fibonacci, which takes one parameter named n as an input. The first block of code in the function, as it's frequent in recursive functions, is in charge of identifying the base case, the case in which n is 0 or 1, that is, when n is less or equal to 1. In that case, we return n itself. This base case covers the first two Fibonacci numbers in the sequence. If we still remain in the body of the function after this code, it means that the return statement above didn't execute, and therefore the condition in the if block was false. At this point, we're dealing with a general case in which n is greater than 1. Here we need to obtain the two previous Fibonacci numbers of the sequence, which will involve two recursive calls. The first call saves Fibonacci number n minus 1 in a variable called 1 back. And the second saves Fibonacci number n minus 2 in another variable named 2 back. In the final block of code, we return the result of the Fibonacci number n as the sum of variables 1 back and 2 back. As we did in our factorial project, let's add a simple main program that allows us to interact with the user. This program reads a value n from the keyboard, passes it to our function to obtain the nth Fibonacci number, and prints the result into the terminal. As before, I'd like to ask you to type this code by yourself and run some experiments with it. Please use the code editor to create a project named Fibonacci. Type the implementation I just presented and run your program several times while entering different input numbers for n. Pause the video now and I'll be back with a brief analysis of the call tree for this problem. If you enjoyed this content, you may watch the rest of this lesson at computersciencecam.com, linked in the description below. You'll be able to follow along with coding samples and problems in our embedded code editor. Drop your questions in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe to help support the channel. Thank you and happy coding!